we're on to the AC lines. Uh, I had this evacuated yesterday, but it was quite a bit cooler yesterday than it is today. Probably by almost 15, 18 degrees. So, there's a nut I was looking for. When you go to take this stuff off, just be aware, you can hear this. It still has pressure. It will continue to build pressure. So, when you take these off, you got to be careful. You can see what happens here. It spews a little bit. Now, this one here is the high side of the condenser. So we'll take that one apart. And then, we will put uh, caps on. The problem is, when I put caps in these, um, they tend to not stay because the system will build pressure again and it'll blow the cap back out which is what you'll see happen right here okay now we are on to heater hoses and ECM wiring okay now this is the evap solenoid herd solenoid whichever they call that one um, I take the electric loose of it and there's a retainer on the back side, just a little thing you push, and it slides off that bracket, okay? And then that way, that can stay with the chassis, so there's less to take loose. Those have quick disconnects on them, but they tend to break. This is a heater control. This is staying with the uh, body. So you got to weave this back through. I guess I should have done that first. And now, okay, um, we got a vacuum line here. It goes to our vacuum reservoir, and most cases I find it's easiest just to pop it off over here, out of there, and then I use it to kind of hold the heater hose in place, take the things, you know, the, the vacuum canisters in place, like so. Now, up in here is the ECM. And there's one for the body, one for the transmission, and one for the engine. This is pretty hard to see under here. Can you yeah. get that? They have a little clip underneath them you have to push up on. This is the engine one, so we'll take it loose and lay it with the engine. This is the body, so it stays. And the other one is the transmission. Now, the transmission and the bot and the the uh engine both are on this bracket right here so you have to get that tool that interior tool it's on the cart grab it okay and we have to pop them loose and these are those things i was talking about on the uh f-150 that had been apart before and had been ripped loose from the loom there can you see that no these push pins right here you know, take the time to get them out. They're there for a reason to hold the wiring from getting chafed or cut, anything like that. So, now, that being said, I have one more heater hose, and it goes, it's kind of a pain. It goes clear back to the firewall back here, and it's a quick disconnect. Also, I push it in, squeeze the two little tabs, Pull it out if it'll come. It's really kind of tight, but you see what that is. It's a quick disconnect. And that stays with the motor. Alright, and that is that should be all of that. This stays here. And at this point is where we would get uh, some bungees and start tying this stuff up or just watch it as we come up. Okay, as far as I know, if I remembered everything. Uh, when you do the fan clutch now, I take the fan clutch out, then I'm going to take the fan shroud just so we have more room, and I think we're ready to go. So let me get the tool for that, and we bring it back. So many of you have seen me use this before. This is the Lyle fan clutch tool. goes on my air hammer. Very simple to use. Makes these things usually a breeze. Let's get it on there. A couple quick taps, and there it is. You see how it comes loose? Nothing to it. And then, well, it comes in this big set. Why don't you show this set? Alright, so it comes like this. And there's all these different sizes of 
wrenches for all the different fan clutches. Uh, I have not found that I didn't have the right set for anything. Um, if you guys need one, that's what it is. Part number 43300. Um, they don't pay me anything, but that's a pretty good tool. Um, now, I'll get this fan clutch unscrewed. And I've, every one of these Super Duties I've ever run into has been regular right-hand threads. I've, I've never seen any of them so far that have been uh, left-hand threads. You know, what I mean by that is regular. They're usually regular threads, not something um, different or opposite. Okay, now we're going to take the two 8 millimeters out of here, and we will get the fan shroud out. I guess I need to get that degas bottle too. I seem to keep forgetting about that. Okay. So, here's our fan shroud. And the fan clutch is down in there. And usually I can reach down in here and grab that at the same time and get this fan clutch out far enough, or the fan shroud out far enough that I can get the fan clutch out so it doesn't damage anything. Now, when you're taking the fan clutch out, I mean a uh, fan shroud, I don't know why I keep saying fan clutch. There is a safety clip down here for the bottom radiator hose. I usually find this is the easiest way to get to it. You know, standing on your head. Let me get a pair of pliers in there. Usually, I can take a pair of pliers, get them two together, and push, and it'll pop out. And then it has to come out and then slide out of that bracket. So let me pop that out real quick. All right. So you pull it out, and then that pulls down, and it releases the lower radiator hose. Okay. It takes care of that. So once you got the hose off, now the fan shroud comes out pretty easy. I see there's a nut down there from something else. Um, I saw that. I didn't lose one, so I don't know where that came from or how long it's been there, but I'm betting a while. Let me get my arm stretcher. And it looks like a... Hmm. I don't know. Oh, I do know what that is. I did drop a bolt. That is for a nut. a nut. That's for the air intake. There's a rubber mount that goes on here. I accidentally dropped that and forgot about it. Okay, so degas bottle next. Need a 10 millimeter. Get that a couple bolts out of there. And then we have power steering. Take these two out. I'll also throw this back on. Slide this out. Throw my bolts back in. And lay this on the engine. Okay, I got the pressure line um, taken loose here. And I've got the hose clamp on the suction line off the reservoir loose, and I'm ready to pull this off. Um, and I got a drain pan down below it because this makes just such a stinking mess. Because you can imagine, I have to drain the whole entire reservoir. And in order to move this in a way, this, this reservoir, so that um, it doesn't make a mess, is a huge ordeal. It's a lot to take apart. So if you're going to do this, be prepared. You know, watch here. You can see that. There we go. There it goes. I got a drain pan underneath it, and of course it hits the body mount, the body, the frame, the radiator support, everything. It's just a bad setup right there. Um, but doing it that way is, in my opinion, far better than trying to uh, take the reservoir loose and trying to get the coolers loose on a 2006 truck. Because you'd have to take the whole entire front apart from the engine. Now, that being said, we got this now for right at two hours. And it's ready to come off. 
So, let's get it set up and see if we can get it off here. have it that's two hours of work on a super duty pretty quick pretty easy pretty painless um, so now the plan for this is we are going to take this 5.4 engine out I'm going to uh, take the valve covers off take the timing cover off replace all those parts that are known to go bad um, just like we did on the uh, navigator and what other one we just do? I don't know. 
that V10. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. Um, however, I'm not going to do it in the frame because if you can imagine, look how far back I'd have to reach. I guess that's hard to tell that way, but you see how far back that sits. And if I don't take the front bumper off and the support across the bottom, then it's kind of a pain in the butt. So uh, we're just going to go ahead and pull the motor out which at this point makes it very simple. So uh, that's probably enough for this one. We're gonna put two hours worth of work into about half an hour or 20 minutes of a video. So we're gonna leave you with that. Um, we're about ready to go get a drink. Um, like I said, we started, uh, we, we've got right at two hours in it, maybe just a little under, but uh, it goes pretty quick. But it goes that quick because you know we've done several of them. So um, I'm gonna leave you with that. We're gonna get a drink. That's it for this one. This will next time you'll see us on this. We'll have we'll be taking the motor out. We'll get it torn down. We'll get all the parts ordered. Get it ready to go in the F-150 frame. So I'm gonna leave you with that. If you guys like what we're doing, give us a thumbs up. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and leave your comments down below. All right, guys. See you in the next one.